Hi, welcome to Project Wealth. Will there be a recession in 2024? There's a big split among experts yet again whether there will be a recession or not. It's looking more and more like it's less likely with the stock market reaching for the all-time high. Interestingly enough, this time even Warren Buffett is in the recession camp. I don't take his words lightly. On the other hand, a lot of economic data has remained very resilient. Still, consumers feel like the recession's already here given how prices skyrocketed in the last two years except for our own salary. In this video, we're going to talk about what some of the notable experts out there are saying about the recession and what we can do to prepare ourselves whether the recession comes or not. Before we go any further, if you can please hit that like button below and subscribe, it will help me out tremendously with my new channel. Some of the most famous financial experts are betting that there will be a recession next year. Jamie Dimon, the CEO of JP Morgan, believes a recession is likely in 2024, citing risks including geopolitical conflicts and high interest rates remaining higher for much longer. But for those who remember, Jamie Dimon's economic hurricane that he predicted in 2022 for 2023 never came true either. It was more of a drizzle rather than a hurricane in Q1 with a banking crisis, but which was quickly followed by sunshine and liquidity. The world's perhaps the most famous investor, Warren Buffett, also provided a gloomy outlook for the US economy, stating that the incredible period of growth for the US economy is coming to an end. Berkshire Hathaway also recently sold $13 billion in stock in the second quarter ahead of a possible recession. Warren Buffett is also a value investor and he believes that the current stock market valuation is just way too high for investing. So a historically reliable recession indicator called SOM rule created by an economist Claudia SOM was recently triggered indicating that we may already be in a recession, although Claudia SOM herself has some doubts that this time may be different. And there are other experts that are a bit, little bit gloomier, including Ray Dalio, David Rosenberg, and many big bank CEOs and economists who are in the recession camp for 2024. On the other hand, many predict a soft landing or even no landing. The CEO of Bank of America expects a soft landing where the US economy avoids a recession even with the slowing consumer spending and commercial borrowing. Bank of America economist predicts the US economy will grow 2.7% this year and 0.7% in 2024. In the so-called soft landing scenario, economic growth slows but remains positive. Also, the chief investment officer of Citi Global Wealth believes that there will not be a recession in 2024, but a slowing economy which will re-accelerate in the second half of 2024 and 2025. Happens to coincide with the election. And there's Tom Lee from Fundstrack Global Advisors, who's been a perma bull even in 2008 when he was with JP Morgan, but he's been largely correct about this bull market. So it's obvious that we can't just believe what these experts are predicting about the 2024 recession. After all, a lot of them have been wrong about the 2023 recession, which never came. Well, the truth is, nobody knows. Well, I remember Bloomberg economist stated in October of 2022 that the US has 100% chance of recession in the next 12 months. Well, that aged well. You know, when somebody says there's a 100% chance of something happening, that just cannot be true. And ironically, that is when the stock market actually bottomed, was October 2022. Now let's look at some of the data. The current economic indicators overall show that a recession is unlikely. We have a very low unemployment data, strong job market, strong retail sales, and elevated consumer spending. There still are some concerning indicators though, such as the declining PMI data and increasing delinquencies and bankruptcies for consumers and businesses, and of course the significant gap between nominal and real household income thanks to the inflation that has been eroding away our purchasing power. There's also been a yield curve inversion between the two-year and 10-year treasury yields that's been happening since July of 2022, which is about a year and a half ago. Historically, when this inversion happened, I mean, that was one of the most reliable indicators of a recession. It doesn't happen right away. There's a bit of a lag effect after the inversion happens, and when it starts to uninvert, that's usually a sign of a recession. But this time might be different. In addition, the consumer sentiment of the economy is very low right now, 
And according to this article, nearly 6 in 10 Americans feel like the US economy is currently in a recession. I mean, let's face it, consumer prices have been skyrocketing in the last two years while our salaries stagnated. Price of housing, used cars, or even your favorite Chipotle burrito is like 17 bucks or 20 if you want guac. I mean, that's insane. I mean, we as consumers are squeezed in every way. And although our political leaders try to get you to celebrate the fact that the inflation is declining, the truth is that doesn't mean the prices are going down. I'm not even sure if our politicians understand what inflation means, which is a year-over-year -year rate of increases in prices. So when the inflation is rising slower, that just means that now already high prices are still rising, but at a slower pace. So yeah, thanks to the slow rising inflation next year, a Chipotle burrito could be like $22 instead of 20 bucks. Prices just aren't going down without a deflation. Here's another thought. 2024 is an election year. Historically, stock market did well during election years, and this is one of the bullish theses for 2024. This time though, I have my doubt with our currently divided Congress. I just don't think that the US government can agree on anything to provide any sort of stimulus to the public, even if we face a severe slowdown. Also, let's take a look at this chart of federal funds rate. This shows the history of the federal funds rate. And as you see, a recession followed pretty much every peak interest rate. Right now, it's safe to say that we are at the peak interest rate since Jerome Powell pretty much said in the latest FOMC meeting that this is likely the peak rate. As you look at the chart, Soft landings just do not happen. Maybe here it did, but that was very rare. So we just don't know whether there will be a recession or not. At this point, it's a coin toss. There's a high level of uncertainty and everybody is confused. So what does that mean for regular people like you and me? What can we do to prepare for a possible recession scenario? First of all, I must say this. You have to do everything you can to hold on to your job. Job hiring has been slowing down lately except for part-time service jobs. And if we have a recession, there will be lots of layoffs, although we don't know what the peak level of unemployment will be. If you're an investor, it's getting close to the time where we need to be a little bit cautious. I mean, if you're a passive investor, you keep going. Keep maxing out that 401k and get your employer matching. Eventually you'll win. And this recession will look like a little blip on a 30 year chart in the future. But if you're still worried about the recession, you could perhaps take some profit off the table, probably in January of 2024 from S&P 500 funds, which is heavily weighted by the mega cap tech stocks, the Magnificent Seven, which has been going straight up this entire time. And they're very richly valued right now. And so you take some of that money and reallocate some of that into like a shorter term treasury bonds, stable value funds, and high yield dividend funds, and wait this out. If the recession does come, then you'll get a handsome profit off of your short term treasury bonds, and you can start reallocating back into the S&P 500 fund once it has a substantial leg down to test some of the key levels like 4,100, 3,800, or even 3,500. And that could be a huge gift to you if you have a lots of dry powder. Or if you're in the soft landing or no recession camp, there's a lot of stocks that's already beaten down to pulp because the stock market rally in 2023 was just for the magnificent seven mega cap stocks, whereas the rest of the stock market, such as the small cap, is barely up. I mean, look at the financials and the industrial stocks. I mean, it's beaten down so much that it's starting to become kind of interesting, especially if the recession never comes. If the economy is to reaccelerate, I mean, these stocks should start doing pretty well again. And also keeping your non-retirement trading funds parked in the money market funds earning 5% a year should continue to give you a solid protection in 2024, whether the recession comes or not. If the economy continues to be strong without a recession, then interest rates will continue to remain high and you'll get a handsome yield risk completely free. I mean, although that rate might start coming down a little bit um, starting from the second half of 2024. And if a recession does come, your assets completely protected and you can even start deploying some of that cash into the stock market after a substantial price decline. Just make sure you don't become a doomer and miss the dip because you think the world's going to end. Well, that's it for today's video. I hope you found this useful. If you like this content, please hit that like button and subscribe. It will help me out tremendously with my new channel, which helps me keep going. Thanks for watching.